It's not the hardest job in the world to do, but it is a bit tricky. Um, and it requires com basically complete disassembly, or 90% disassembly at least. This is for a Phantom 4 standard, but it does also apply to the Phantom 4 Advanced, as well as the Phantom 4 Pro models, which is the Pro and the Pro V2, Pro Plus, etc. This is obviously the your motor, by the way. Basically, the left and right turning. As you can see, it's quite quite busted up. That is not what it should look like. I am removing uh, this board as well and the only reason for removing that board is for a bit of a cleanup. So the gimbal as you can see it's got a bit of sand and dust everywhere. gimbal flex gets removed completely because it plugs into the yaw motor always be careful using metal tweezers on these flexes because they are super sensitive and you can you can tear them in the process of pulling or tugging on them but just a little experience sort of know the amount of pressure to use so do get plastic tweezers which is quite helpful but i have been doing this for a while so Again, struggling with the intermittent the magnetic <laughs> screwdrivers. The tools needed for this would be, <coughs> believe it or not, a hammer and then a socket to knock out the old your motor the shaft that the bearing runs around oh, let me just find the replacement and i'll show you what i mean when i say it needs to get knocked out i'll show you shortly i won't be able to do it on this workbench because i'm going to most likely lose a couple of screws but i will give you an idea of where to start and how to do it So the yaw motor plugs into this little ESC which is responsible for controlling the yaw uh, movement. Again careful with metal tweezers and the gimbal flex that's being removed now as well that plugs into the ESC. This can be tricky without <coughs> removing the cover. But it's doable. I am going to try and save the flex. Visually it doesn't look damaged, but it could still be damaged. I 
this is not how it normally comes off. So they have one screw over here that holds that piece in place. As mentioned, it's not easy to get to with the image sensor cover on. But again, it's doable. Now, let me just grab a longer star screwdriver to play. Client might have attempted to glue this in place and now make my job even harder. Definitely glue. Some form of super glue. Chop a blade. That's going to help us in the situation. So the reason why this is a tricky repair is because this make this is a replacement geo motor. This magnetic little shell is most likely not going to be compatible with this gimbal. And the reason is this shell has its <coughs> calibration for the magnets on the inside set to this gimbal. And so this shell gets removed. This motor comes out, this one comes out, and this motor then gets put into the, this gimbal's shell. And that's the reason for the trickiness of it all. If it was as easy as just popping in a new motor, I think it would have been a 20 minute job. So, unfortunately I'm not going to be able to knock it out on the desk. This is the tool that I tend to use for this. All I do in a case like this is align it up this way. I'm most likely going to have to stick this on here for support. Line it up this way and use a bit slightly thinner than that little shaft and just tap it out with a hammer. Gently tap it up with the hammer. I'm going to do the same for this one. And then I will swap it over and gently tap it back in. So let me do that off camera quickly. So just quickly. Some internal damage. So it might have an effect depending on where magnetic north is on this actual shell small amount of damage nothing too serious small little hairline crack on the inside so let's see if this guy's still good cool old parts new part still a slim chance this might not work as mentioned due to the shell having some slight magnetic damage. Uh, let's see what happens. You can see gaps from the little sensor to the shell itself. 
Minimal. Here's it should be. Sometimes the flexes, replacement, <coughs> your motor flexes are a little bit longer. At least the case with this unit. And as you can see, I try and keep it suspended as much as possible. Do not put unnecessary pressure on the on the gimbal itself, on the pitch, the roll, the yaw, etc. Preferred method of air is to heat it up a little bit. Obviously, without burning or damaging the flex. Oh. I think I'm going to pull this bracket because it is quite a bit bent. So I think this guy I need to replace as well. I just spotted it's quite badly bent. That should be at a 90. So that bend is not good. So give me a moment, let me just... I'm not going to bend this one straight because... That's just much easier and quicker to replace. Cool. Found one. It looks much better. We'll have to get tested as well to be sure it doesn't chafe against the arm super smooth no chafing perfect that tension was purely the that bend over there on the flex the tension feels perfect both ways quite smooth Cap looks, cap looks okay. Just make sure it is okay. Again, Phantom Force, Phantom Force Pose, they tend to, the, your, the gimbal, your motors at least, they tend to chafe on this cap. That's also something to test for. Everything seems to be straight. No chafing, no touching. That's a good sign. Thank you.